Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, welcome to RTC Mix tutorial number one. I'm very excited to finally show you how to make some sounds with RTC Mix. And if you have already compiled the source code in your computer and you have a text editor to work with and you're already familiar with uh, some basic coding syntax and concepts, that means you are ready to start this tutorial. If, on the other hand, you don't, uh, please make sure to check the addendum tutorial videos I've made specifically to fill in some of those gaps and put you up to speed. Uh, but with that being said, let's uh, get underway. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, open terminal, which is what we use to run our scripts and open our text editor, which is what we use to write them. Uh, one thing that I like to do is arrange it, uh, arrange the windows like this uh, to have uh, constant access to both uh, Terminal and Visual Studio Code. Uh, so let's um, open a new file. I'm going to save this file in my desktop as tutorial1.seo and um, we're ready. So RTC Mix. Uh, can be essentially boiled down to knowing how to use two different types of code units. The first one um, are the score file commands, which for practical reasons I'll be referring to as functions. So functions uh, like this. And the second type of code units are known as instruments, something like this. And as you can see, uh, score files, uh, score file commands or functions are like regular functions in other uh, programming uh, languages, meaning the syntax is pretty much the same. It's the name of the function next to a set of parentheses and no space in between these two. Uh, now, the first function that you need to know about is the rtset params function. Uh, which is absolutely essential if we want to produce sound with our scripts. And RTSet params takes um, two different arguments. The first one is the sampling rate and the second one is the number of output channels. So if you don't know what a uh, sampling rate is, I would recommend reading a little bit about it. Uh, but the general principle is that the higher the sampling rate uh, the higher the resolution in the frequency domain. So for now we can just type 44100, which is a standard uh, sampling rate value. And for output channels, we can type two for stereo. Uh, now let's um, use our first instrument, which is going to be wavetable. Uh, so before we get into wavetable, one thing to notice um, is the instrument syntax, uh, meaning that it's the instrument name in all caps next to a set of parentheses, just like uh, the functions. Uh, now, in RTC Mix, an instrument is any code unit in charge of uh, producing or processing audio signal. Um, and we need to let RTC Mix know which instruments we are going to be using in our scripts before we ever uh, use them. And to do that, we use the load function. And the load functions, uh, the load function takes um, uh, an argument, which is the instrument name um, written as a string um, that is inside. Um, a pair of quotation marks. And if we were to skip this, um, RTC Mix would tell us that it doesn't know what wavetable um, is when we use it. Now, wavetable is a very basic uh, synthesis instrument and it takes a number of arguments or as they are usually called parameters. So we are going to type inside the parentheses uh, zero, one, 8,200 uh, and 0 0.5. Um, so 
what do these numbers mean? Well, uh, their meaning depends on where inside the parentheses they were typed. Uh, in other words, uh, the position of each value determines what they control. And so in the case of wave table, we have the following uh, wave table, we have the following syntax. So wave table open parentheses and the first uh, parameter is start time specified in seconds, then duration time specified in seconds as well, amplitude, which I'll get to in a second. Then we have frequency specified, of course, in Hertz. And uh, lastly, we have panning, which is um, a number between zero and one. Um, so one useful thing to do, and let me copy this and put it below this thing. One useful thing to do is use variables to clarify uh, what each of those values mean. So I could say, for instance, that the variable st uh, equals zero, which will be um, representing um, the start time, then use it dur uh, variable for duration, then the amp variable for amplitude, uh, freak variable for frequency, and a pan variable for panning. Now let's try uh, running this, uh, this script and uh, listen, um, listen to it. So I'm going to use CD to go to my desktop, uh, let's see, desktop, and I'm going to run this script, tutorial. Beautiful. Uh, now, among, among the many, many quirks that RTCMix has are the specification of amplitude and the specification of panning. Uh, so for amplitude, if we are working with instruments like Wavetable, by which I mean instruments that synthesize sound from scratch, we'll have to use a number between uh, 3, 2, 7, 6, uh, 8, sorry, minus, minus 3, 2, 7, 6, 8, and 3, 2, 7, 6, 7. Uh, where zero would be complete silence, and the more you deviate from zero, the higher the amplitude is, uh, which I know uh, it's pretty annoying, but that's just the way it is. Uh, for now, what I would recommend is specifying amplitude between with a value between zero and something like uh, 15,000, uh, which is loud enough for what we'll be doing. Uh, now, for panning, uh, let's see if you can notice um, why it's so weird the way we have to specify it. So let's say that instead of 0 0.5, we specify 0. And let's run this uh, script um, in RTC Mix. Yeah, so if you're a normal and sane human being, you're probably expecting 0 to translate to your left side, but for whatever reason, in RTC Max, zero means right and one means left. So it's a small detail, but it's something to be aware of as you start playing with uh, panning. Now, before we move on to the next tutorial, what I would recommend is you spend some time trying different things on your own. Uh, like for instance, uh, making uh, different copies of weight table to create uh, chords. So for instance, can do something like this. Uh, no, I don't want to save this. I'm going to save this one. Let's run it. Right? And you can actually play around with this with the panning. So, yeah, like this. And you can also play around with the start time uh, and the duration time to create uh, melodies. So let's say um, we do something like this. Yeah. yeah. So uh, doing stuff like this will help you will help you uh, get more familiar with Wavetable, 
and you'll be ready for the next tutorial where we'll be using it again. Uh, as always, feel free to leave questions or comments if you have any, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching.